Okay. <clears throat> and last week, uh, we had a look of the node. And actually, we, we start explaining uh, the different layers in the, the development stack. So the front end, the middleware, and the server, and, and the back end, different layers. We explain different options that is there, the popular options, and why we are, and so what we will be using, which is the uh, the front end will be viewed, the server will be, be node, the middleware will be expressed, and the database will be the MongoDB. That will be the stack we'll be using. And then the second half of the last lecture, we explained what Node.js is. We talked a little bit about installing Node and then create a simple Node module, and mostly just to create a new package.json file. We talked about how to install new packages using npm. Actually, that itself is actually probably more useful than the node itself, and we use more. And then finally, we created a, a simple HTTP server using node. Okay, <clears throat> that's probably all that we were going to cover in terms of node. Um, the majority of the time we spent for the backend actually will be on the express. Obviously, we're also going to spend some time on the MongoDB as well. And but for the MongoDB, we assume you already have some knowledge, and also we're going to be using the um, uh, graphical user interface to manage the database. So that should be quite easy to do. Okay, and so we're going to start with from this week. I'm going to start with the Express, which is the middleware part, which um, runs on top of the. Uh, let me see if I had a picture here. Yeah. Uh, there's a picture coming up very soon. Um, so Express is built on top of Node.js. So you need Node.js to run Express. And uh, it makes it a little bit easier to use lots of functions, which you can potentially do um, in Node. Um, but it's just made it a bit easier in Express <clears throat> in terms of middleware and routing. Actually, um, middleware and routing will be quite difficult um, to do in Node without Express. Um, I mean, maybe it's not the best analogy, but and think of Express, the relation between Express and Node is almost like a view and uh, playing JavaScript. And everything you do in view, you can do in JavaScript, plain JavaScript, but the view just make it a bit easier. For example, real-time updates or the binding between the elements and data, and just using view make it much easier. And similar situation here in, in Express. Most of the things Express can do, can do, you can do in Node as well. It's quite a bit of harder. Okay, um, it has some helpful utility functions, a utility like functions, yeah, and features. And for example, Express has its own HTTP server, and we created the one using Node before. It's not very long at all and but the express version is even shorter it will see that later on <clears throat> and it helps and to render in dynamic html pages views uh we're going to come back to that when we actually starting to send data to the front end and to show the pages okay and just come back to so that's kind of different stack or different layers we talked about last week the front end is the view and uh, the middleware, we're going to be using Node.js as a server, and the Express can be run on top of the middleware, and the database will be MongoDB. And so of the one of the main function or role of the Express, it, it is the kind of middleman between the front end and the database. So we are not having front-end retrieving anything from the database directly. For example, the front-end will not know what database is being used, what is where it's being served, where's the IP address of the server, what is the username, password, or the name of the collection in MongoDB to do all of this, to retrieve or save data. This is going to be, it's only talk to the middleware. So, so first, first of all, this is much safer, so you don't have to, uh, save, say, the username, password, and in the front-end code, which is really not a good idea to do. But also, and that provides the flexibility. So basically, the front-end does not couple or rely on any particularly back-end database. 
And you can move the database to different places or even change from MongoDB to a different, say, MySQL. And so long as the middleware interface or the express interface to the front end is the same, and all these changes can happen without affecting or without you have to change any code in the front end. So that's definitely a benefit. <clears throat> okay, and you can see the way it works with the user and any request, including the data retrieving or saving requests or send, sending to middleware. And the middleware would say retrieve or save the data to the database and then send the response back to the front end. Okay, and so yeah, and already mentioned, and um, Express providing some features which make it easier to use, and if you want to use Node Node.js directly, and also another thing is very important, and we will talk about later is about routing, and which allows you to break down a big complex applications, which would run server applications into more manageable smaller parts, and that so what this means. So you can say make it a more not lissic request handler function, which is one function handles all different types of requests, including reading, retrieving, requesting from a user or from admin. <clears throat> Only one function into smaller pieces makes it much easier to manage or maintain each one of those. Okay. Uh, so these are the core parts and the first part is middleware and the second part is routing so um so first and the middleware here is different from express itself which is called the middleware <clears throat> and these are two different things these are the one of the features of the express itself and you can treat the express itself as a middleware between uh, the front and database front end and database um, and then between, uh, we'll see later on the difference between um, middleware and the routing. So middleware is something you will always run, whereas routing where it depends on the user request, you will choose one of the paths and to go forward. So that's the difference between these two. Okay, and you can have sub applications. And unfortunately it's called, its name is a bit confusing. It's called the routers which are very similar to routing, but these are different things. And routers is almost like have multiple express applications. So you can have one express applications, including middleware and routing. And, but you can also contain other sub middleware applications, sub, sub express applications. These will be called routers. So this is useful when your code gets really big, for example, and your express just single file get over a few hundred lines of code or even more. And you will probably want to break them into different files. And then this is when the routers comes in. And then some other nice things which simplify the features you would have in Node.js, the convenience. Okay, I'm gonna start with the first part with the middleware. <clears throat> and so if you remember, from last week, uh, we have when we create a simple HTTP server, we have this function called request handler, and then depends on and it will provide a response to the user's request. And so you can imagine, obviously, last time and we created probably the simplest possible request handler function. And which doesn't matter what request user sent, you only just return the same message, which is a text string. And in the lab, we tried to so, say, okay, how can we send back an array of JSON objects? Okay, but in the real world, it's much more complex. So first of all, um, you have different type of requests. And so for example, you have the request to get login, and you have a request to retrieve data, you have requests to save data. And even for retrieving data, you want to retrieve data from say different collections, even in the same collections, you might have different type of queries. So you can imagine if you have only one request handler function and it has to have many, many code for each of these situations, it have some 
the codes to run, say, depends on what incoming request is. So it can easily get quite large and complicated. And then in Express, and for just depends on the incoming request, you can easily break your code into different smaller functions inside your um, Express app or Node.js app, and each function will handle a specific type of request. Okay. And one of these ways to do to handle it, one of these functions which handle these smaller requests is called middleware function. And the routing is also this type of thing, but it works slightly differently. We'll see the difference very soon. Okay. And in terms of the middleware functions, um, it can, for example, do things like logging user requests or sending static files. Okay, uh, we kind of doing the logging request already. So if you remember in the example from last lecture, whenever there's a request coming, and uh, the code will say console log and the incoming request. This will display the incoming, the path of the incoming request and to the server console. And that's a very simple form of logging request. And you can do more complex ones. Maybe you add more information than just the URL, or you may be even saving the uh, request to a database, which will capture when um, the request was um, received and what the request is and other information. So that's about re logging requests. The other one is sending static files. <clears throat> Here, static files, including HTML, CSS, and images, things like that. So, and the server would not only just serving data. And for example, if you have your app, the first time you open your app, people have to load the, the so-called static files. So these are the HTML, CSS, and image files, for example. They are called static because they don't change with data. Um, so the image, for example, it doesn't change. The CSS file doesn't change. And the HTML page itself actually will change in the sense it's not absolutely static. So the page itself would depend on, for example, the list of lessons you have or list of products you have. It will generate the page based on how many products it has and what information is available for each product. So that's not always static. Okay, anyway, so for the middleware, you can use that to send any static files, like the pictures, for example. Okay, so and um, this is actually very important. And um, you can have multiple middleware functions inside an Express app. And the way it works, it always run in sequence. So in, the, in other sense, the orders of these functions are very important. And it always run the first um, ex first middleware function it has appears in the code. Once it's complete, it will move on to the next one, next middleware function, and so on and so forth until it runs, finishes all of them, or one of the middleware functions stop the, the execution. So this could happen, for example, maybe the second middleware is to for authentication, then it will ask the user to an input to the username password, and it will stop the whole process. And if the username and password is not uh, valid, then it will not follow and not run anymore and following functions. Ah, okay. And so so this is an example. Uh, so this is like a few different middleware functions you have in your app. Okay. And then the first one is a logging middleware. As I said, so it, for example, it just outputs incoming requests to the console. That's all it does. So this one would al always run. And the, then the second one would be the authorization middleware. And this is where it asks the user to type in the username a password and check if it's valid or not. And then there is, if and the username password is correct, and it will go on to the next 
one in the series or in the chain of middleware functions, for example, and this will show you the, the login page, for example, I'm oh, sorry, the user profile page or user account page, for example. But there's also a possibility and say the login failed, then the execution of the middleware function will then stop there and nothing else afterwards will be run. <coughs> Okay, and but the important thing to remember is, and these ones are always run in sequence. So it depends on the order they appear in the code. So if you look at this, so this function have to be run the first in the code, followed by this function appearing in the code, followed by this function in the code. So imagine each of these is a function. This will be the first function closer to the top or most close to the top of the code. And that's the second one, and that's the second, the third one. So on and so forth. Okay, and then next one is called the routing. And similarly, so it will run slightly different code depending on the incoming request. And for example, whether it's retrieving the data, or whether it's the saving the data, or maybe this is to create a user account, or this is to validate username password. So just depending on the in request, and it will run some code to complete that particular task. So this way you can say, <clears throat> uh, break the code into smaller functions, each function is a very specific task. Okay, and these are executed conditionally and depending on the URL and HTTP method. Okay, so, or in other words, so the routing, you can have many routing functions. They don't execute one by one. It's almost like the, uh, and that many if then else conditions depends on what the URL is and what HTTP method is, which we're gonna explain what that means. And it will execute one of the routes if there's a match matching one. And it could be there's no matching ones and nothing can happen. Okay, and also more graphically, it will see it's almost like a branching. You have a place which receives the request, and then you have many branches. Each branch is a one route, and all these are all executed independently to each other. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so this is a picture and. Um, it's actually meant for the routers, but also explain the idea of routing. So let's say this is your application and it can get an incoming request. And then these ones will be different route. Okay. And then depends on what the incoming request is, one of these will get executed. Usually only one is get executed at a time. And then the whole, whole process is finished. And then next request coming, and another one of these will get uh, triggered and executed and so on and so forth. So in a sense, if you say the middleware is in sequence or serial, and this is almost like a parallel, these different uh, routers or routes are independent of each other, they do not execute in sequence. That's the biggest difference. And so you need to choose which one to use depends on the scenarios. For example, if something that's always should be run, then it should be a middleware. Whereas something is only run and when certain condition is met, then it should be a route. Okay, and then as I said, and this is something about the routers. And so, um, how do I say? So the routers allows you to further simplify your code. Routing allows you to put, like I say, relatively small independent functions uh, in the features into a function where routers um, superficially allows you put code in a separate file. So even a, a single routing function, a routing function is become too big to fit in one file and you can put that into a separate file. Okay, and we're gonna just briefly mention routers for this module. And it only makes sense when the Express app becomes really big, say a few hundred lines minimum, which will not happen in our case. So 
it does not make too much sense for us to use a router yet, and but it's useful to be aware. Okay. Okay, and so these are the the main concepts. You have the middleware and the routing, and then also the routers, which is kind of like a more advanced version of routing, but it's called the routers. <clears throat> okay, and then so first, now, now back to the more practical side uh, to. And before you can use Express, you need to install it. It's just a pack, and it's just a node package. And so the installation will be the same as install any other um, packages. So if you remember, and you just type npm install and followed by Express. And again, and you don't really need to save anymore. Okay, and then if you run this, and you should see this add to your package.json file automatically. And you should have express and followed by the version. I don't know if it's, this is the latest version or not. And so it might change and might still stay the same. Okay, and then by default, and it will be a tree, retrieve the latest version of express, unless you specify a version of express when you run the npm install command. And the actual file will be put in the node modules and folder. This is a subfolder, which is going to grow bigger very quickly. Uh, we mentioned the last time you probably don't want to include that in your GitHub or your submission files. And because this is something you can e everyone can easily get just by downloading them again. So <clears throat> we'll have a look at that very quickly. Okay, uh, I can actually do this one now. Uh, let me fire up my examples. Uh, week one, yeah. Demo. Just opening up the Visual Studio Code. And I hope you can see uh, there were some changes. Okay. Okay. And you can see now, and this folder is completely empty. Uh, and so you could manually create a patch.json file. That's all you need to start a node project. And uh, in this case, I'm going to just do a using the the tool called MPNINIT, and which allows you to answer a few questions and create the package JSON file for you. And so first you can see this is where it is. And I can do LS, which is list all the files. And in the folder, you can see that the country is nothing there. To start, I can just do MPNINIT. <clears throat> and it will ask you some questions. And the first question is, uh, what is the name of your package? Okay, I go just call demo. So this is the default value in the bracket. And if you think it's fine, you just enter and version. I don't have a description. Entry points, okay, index.js sounds good. Or maybe I call app.js. Test command, git repository, keyword all these things. And finally, is this okay? I say yes. Okay. And you can now see uh, there's a package.json file created. And uh, with the information you entered, the only thing I changed is here and everything else was generated by default. Okay. And then now we want to install the express because I don't have express yet. So I go back here. I say npm install. I don't even think I need the capital. Add express. Enter. And then it will go online, try to download the files required. And then you can see, and this now is automatically added to my file. And it says now one of the dependencies of the project is express. And the version it installed is 4.17, sorry, 4.17.1. Okay, and also you can see now uh, 
in my file list, I have this folder called node underscore modules. This is where node automatically save all the files for different modules you installed. And the more you install, the more files it will be there. And if you expand, you can see there's lots of things there. Okay, also here it's actually by default shows a little bit of gray. That means it's hidden by default. So I think I can't remember now. But also if you open it up there, you can see there's lots of things. And obviously the one we want is called Express. So I can see, yeah, Express it here. These are all the files come with Express. And then the everything else are the libraries required by the Express or their requirements or their dependencies. And for example, Express requires ETag and uh, EE first to run. And then EE first maybe needs another two libraries to run the deep, deep, dip and uh, say destroy. And they might have other their own dependencies and so on and so forth. So what the MPN install do, it will find all the dependencies recursively, say, does what dependency does this library need? Okay, does their dependency need, have their own dependencies and go so on and so forth? And it will download everything. So that's why even you just installed uh, one module, which I here just installed one express. And that's why you have so many different things here already. I'm not sure if I can show you the size in here. Yeah, I don't think it tells you the size here. But if I check, for example, on my computer, um, I would be able to see now, say, maybe, yeah. So you can see here. Uh, in this case, and it actually installed 50 packages. Even you just need one, which is Express, because the other rest are all the dependencies. And then in terms of the file size, a get info. Okay, so far it's not too bad. It's only 2.5 megabytes. But this folder can get big very quickly, and the more things you start to install. Okay. And that's all we need. Now we have a node project and we installed Express and we can actually write code using Express. Okay, let's get back to the slide. <clears throat> okay, and uh, so first you need to use the module, just as before, you need to use the require command and followed by the module name, which is called Express. And usually we give it to a variable of the same name. Then later on, we can use its functions by calling this variable. <clears throat> and this is what we had before. And this is using the building HTTP module from a node. And we actually don't really have to use it, but we can still include it here. Okay. <clears throat> this is how you start. A, oh, this is how you start the Express application or app and just run Express as a function. And usually, again, you give it a name. So in this case, called app. So that's my Express app. Okay. And then here, we are creating the first middleware. So if you remember, we talk about middleware and the routing. So today we're going to mostly focus on the middleware. Uh, middleware are the ones it runs in sequence and always run. Okay, and so the app is this app here, which is Express itself, and it says dot use. Okay, so this is the important part. The use is a part that you create middleware. Okay, and if you see app dot use, you know, and um, it's a middleware. Okay. And then here inside the use is the actual middleware functions. So this is passed to app.use as a parameter and you're essentially passing a function as a parameter. So that means when this middleware is run, which it will be every time the request coming, it will run this function. 
it's possible you can de define and give a name a fun a fun name to the function you define for example somewhere here and then just the app use this function that's also fine yeah and so if you look at it, the format of this function it's not that different from the the request handler we saw before and it has the request and the response these are the two objects so this one contains all the information that comes from the client side and this is a response that you will be sent back so that will be empty initially okay and so what we will do is we'll say console.log in comes a request to the request.url so this is actually exactly the same command we saw last time <coughs> So it outputs a request to the console, and then the second line, it will send a response back. Otherwise, if you don't have this line, the server, sorry, the, the client side of the browser will keep waiting for the response, kind of like a hand there. So you say the send, we're going to send a message to say, hello world. Uh, not that exciting, or yet. Again, you have to make sure, say, the response here match to the name here, so that match to the second object in the parameter, and then the request have to be map mapping to here request, and then finally, and you started the server. Okay, and so HTTP dot create server is exactly the same, and here this used to be the request the handler function we created manually. And in this case, we are using the middleware created using Express as the event, uh, as the event handler function or the request handler function. And finally, we set the port. So this one would actually start the server. So this part set up. This one set the uh, event handler for the incoming request. In this case, we only have this one. Uh, middleware, so that's the only thing that handle all the requests. And finally, we start this with listen three thousand. Okay, and we're gonna do that here. We said this is gonna called app.js. Okay, so we're gonna create a new file called app.js. <clears throat> uh, so, so we need the express. Uh, constant express equal to require express and then okay i'm going to using http here as well but later on you can see you can actually uh, equal to require you can see you can actually create a server without using the http module okay equal to express okay this is this is just how you start an express application and you always do that and then here we said app dot use and use the, again the key to say this is a uh, middleware not a routing and inside it we have a function two parameters request and the response Okay, in terms of the one thing it's going to do is console.log income request from, uh, actually, this is a request for request.url. So this is actually the logging we're talking about. So it's logging just output all the requests to the console. This is a very simple form of logging, which we did before. And then we send a response back. And do slightly differently. Hello from Express middleware. So we're using Express middleware. I mean, from the client side or from the browser part, it would not be able to tell. It looks exactly the same as the one we created last time. And finally, we're going to create HTTP server. We're going to using app 
which is expressed as the uh, as the event handler, and then finally we started the function. Sorry, start the server by listening on the three thousand ports. Okay, I'm gonna clear here. Okay, and then if you remember to start this node app or express app, you type node followed by the file name, in this case, which is called app.js. Okay, and currently there's nothing here, and but I'm pretty sure the whole thing is working already. And so what we'll do, I go here, open new window, I type in localhost 3000, and it might be very small on your side. And there's something I couldn't quite make it bigger. Okay, and you can see, and um, here I've got the response back, say hello from middle from Express Middleware. That's the text we typed in here. So we send the response. And also here I'll get two logs at the output. And so first one is incoming request for slash. And because here we didn't type in any pass after the server address. So that is a hash. And this one is generated by Chrome by default. It always tried to looking for uh, this icon and the fail call, which is the little icon that was shown in the browser tab title. And for example, I can type in localhost slash index dot HTML. So this time I'm requesting a specific file and you can enter. The response is still the same. You still have the same text because it doesn't matter what the request is, but you can then here see this request coming in is actually requesting for a particular file. Even it didn't really respond to that request in any way. Again, Chrome asking for the favor call file. Okay, and so, so far it's the, very similar to what we did last week. And from the user or the client side, and the server behaves exactly the same as before, except maybe the return message was slightly different. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, using start to see more and more what you can do with Express. Yeah, okay, and so this is how you run. Ah, okay, so now we have the version from last week. So, which also only requires the HTTP, and this is the request the handler function. So it doesn't use any libraries and it just in the function itself. It had the request and the response to objects and it log out a message using the request object, the information stored there and send back a response using response.end. And then you start the server and listen at 3000. So what we already did and is kind of combines these two lines into one. <clears throat> and also, instead of having the request handler function here, uh, we use the app, which is an Express JS, Express app. Yeah, and so essentially we had app.use, which kind of replaced this part. And it does exactly the same thing so far, and their code is very similar. Okay, and this is just to further explain how the middleware help break down um, uh, request alert, the request handler function. And so if there's no middleware, you have a request coming in, you have this request handler function, which will generate the response correctly. Okay, and then if you have using middleware, a request coming, it can go through a number of middlewares. Each one does certain different things. And finally, when you finish all these middleware, you would get correct response. So essentially breaking down this one request, fun request handler function to a few or several smaller middleware functions. So these are still just JavaScript functions as we the one we saw earlier. <clears throat> okay, and so for example, 
And this is examples early on to show that all the middlewares, which execute in sequence, so always in the orders they appear in the code. So the this one will do first, and then this one, and then this one. Okay, so what's different is say, and the logging will be its own function middleware, and this authorization will be its own middleware function, and finally, the send information will be another middleware function. So this way, you break down all your response and code into three different functions. Whereas, say, if you don't have middleware and you can you have to write all the code inside the one big request handler functions, <clears throat> which could be uh, much harder to manage and maintain. Okay, and the other nice thing is you can potentially actually reuse the middleware later if you need to. So essentially, each of these are just like a function can be used in multiple places in your app. Okay, um, the simplest middleware and is probably the one which doesn't really change the response. And here the response um, is the one you send back to the user or to the browser. <clears throat> okay, and for example, and um, we had this um, logging, which sent, which output a message on the server console. And that does not affect the output or the response sent back to the uh, mm -hmm. client or the browser at all. So this is, doesn't change the response. And sometimes it's also called a passive middleware. <clears throat> Okay, so this is our first. Ooh. So you can see, uh, this is actually a slightly more complicated uh, example now. And we still have these lines here, which is request the different modules and then create an express app. So these are all fairly standard. And then we have the app.use. And then app dot use again, okay. So each of these is one middleware. So now we have two middlewares, one and two, okay. And so the first middleware here and is so called passive, and it just do a console log, and which outputs some information about the request in terms of times it's and is the method used for the request. So this will give you the type of request, <clears throat> which will cover later when we talk about routing and also the URL. And so it's very similar to the one we did before. And this is called a passive because it does not do anything to about it, the response object. Okay. And also the other thing is important is this next here. So if you have multiple middlewares and you don't want to stop the execution of the next uh, middleware in the queue or in the sequence, you need to call the next at the end of your middleware. Okay, so you have the next as one of the third parameters and you call it at the end of this middleware. And all it does is to run next middleware in the code. <coughs> Excuse me. As we said before, and the order of these middleware executed, it depends on the order they appear in the code. So this middleware function will always be run first because it's the first one appear in the code and followed by this one. And if there's more middleware after that, then it will be run after the second middleware. Okay. And in this case, and you can see, and there's no next here. Okay. Because it knows this is the last middleware I'm going to run. And so I don't have a next. I don't need to run, say, the next function once this one is finished. And once this middleware finished, the whole 
response process finished and nothing more will be done. Okay, so this bit is new. If you have something else to run or other middleware to run after the current one, you have a next as one of the parameters and call it at the end of your middleware function. Okay, so here we talk about the ones which doesn't change, which is called passive. And so the, this is the one which actually already not passive because it's changed the response. And actually the response here is a bit different. It first set uh, the type of the content being sent back, set it to text, and then set the actual content. So you first set the type, and then send the top. So this is the proper way. And if you only just send a text, it can't, most of the time we'll be able to handle it directly by guessing what is the correct type. <clears throat> okay, and this is this where the things um, it's getting a little bit more complex, so maybe I'll put that in the code as well. Okay, and so the first, this uh, middleware will be run, app.use, and it has the next function, so when it's finished, it will call app.next, then it runs this one. Okay, and this is a kind of made up uh, authentication app, <clears throat> okay, and this one is still not at the end of the middleware queue or chain or sequence, so it still has a next, and but it doesn't always run. So it only run if the say the authentication is successful, and otherwise it will stop the execution. Actually, send back a message saying not authorized. Okay. And so obviously the uh, proper authentication uh, middleware would say, ask user for username and password and check that against the saved one and decide whether it's correct or not. Here, it's just to do a random, kind of almost a random check and it gets the current minute of the time and then mod and divide it by two just to see if it's have any remainders. So if it's an even minutes, and it means it's successful, it goes to the next function. If it's not, that means it's failed, and it will send a failed message back and stop the execution. And sorry, and finally, we have the, the last middleware. So this only run if here is true. <clears throat> And in this case, and it will send back a different message, say uh, the password is swordfish or something like this. So this is the last one. So it, doesn't, it will always be the last one. There's nothing after that anymore. So it doesn't have a next and don't need to call it. So you can see here in the second app, it controls whether the um, next app would be executed by deciding whether to call the next function or not. Okay, I'm gonna do that now just to, as an illustration. Uh, yeah. Okay, and so we can still use this. We can still use this one. This is a kind of outer locker and which doesn't really do anything special. All I did is now is add a next. Uh, because we're going to have add more middleware afterwards, and I need to call next at the end of. <clears throat> oh, okay. And actually, in this case, I couldn't. I can't have this one. And the response dot end would end the response, so it will stop the execution. So I can't do that. I will still want to run more. So instead, I'm going to just using just output the. Then we're going to have the second one, second, uh, uh, how do I say, second middleware. 
we have the request, response, and next. Okay. Uh, so I'm just getting the. <clears throat> minutes of the current time and if uh, the minute divided by two and this remainder equal to zero that means it's even so what you can do is just do next essentially allow it to pass to pass this check and goes to the next function, sorry, next middleware. Otherwise, we're going to say response.status code equal to 43. So these actually are predefined the code. You can see a different error message is usually come with these codes. Sometimes file not found the specific code for that 400 or something. Response.end. or so rise okay so we're going to send a different message so similar to uh the one we send here and here is more specific it says it's ended and it's just because you are not authorized to to do that and finally we have our last and um, middleware and this one i'm going to do a function Response. Okay, we don't have next here because we know this will be the last one. Uh, again, response.end. We're going to send a message. Uh, the password is. So fish. Okay. <clears throat> so it just depends on the time. And sometimes we run this send a request and it will get through. And sometimes it will not. Okay. And the other thing here is first you have to stop the current server because it's still running. If I refresh here, you can see I'm getting request here and it will not use the new code yet and so you need to stop this use control c and restart the server in the same command now it's running now if i refresh and it will tell you the password is swordfish uh, refresh again still working i uh, just need to wait until the next minute Okay, I can delete this part. Ah, didn't realize one minute is so long. So now it's 12.28. Just need to wait till it's 12.29. Okay. <clears throat> and if I do it again, it will get the message saying not authorized because now it's a even number of times. So it will stop here to execute this part. Okay, uh, yeah, we are quite behind. Okay, and uh, so if you remember, so this was the request handle function we had from last lecture for the Node.js, and it has this request and response. And I said, and the names you can change, for example, and you can shorten request to REQ, you can shorten response to RES, that's fine. Much more important is the first parameter or object actually is always request and the second one is always response. And the third one will be the next. You can even call this one re response, but it's still gonna store the information about incoming requests. And uh, obviously, it's not advisable because it's going to only just confuse yourself. 
And we use this yeah, uh, response, to the end function of the response a few times already to send back a message and finish basically terminating the response process. Okay, and we kind of covered and um, this one already as well. And for the middleware, so now we are talking about express middleware. It always starts with app.use. And then its function would have three, request, response, and next. So the request and the response is the same as before. And the next is just to run the next middleware. If you know this will be the last function or last middleware function, then you don't need this. Next. Okay, and this is an example, actually something maybe a little bit more realistic. Um, so far, we also did very simple things and sending back some text message, um, which is not actually what real uh, server would do or real middleware would do. And so for this one, we can actually serving static files and we already kind of explained. So this can be say CSS files, image files, or maybe even this case, it can be MP3 files. Okay, and here we assume all these files are be stored in a separate subfolder called the static. And then the file there is called the selen.mp3. That's the files and they're going to be sent back. Okay, and the user, if user requests something else, and this time a file, an HTML file called burrito, and it doesn't exist on your server, then you should send back an error message 404. If you remember, that's the code, and you have each code has its meanings. And 404, I think, usually means the file does not exist. Um, previously, in hmm, not this example, further back, okay. And here we have a different code called 403. That means not authorized. I think the code like 500 means internal serve, uh, server error or something. And give you some clue of what the causing the problems. Okay, and the server would log request an incoming request. And I think it's just output to the console. The synchronous form would just be output to the console log, which we all know we've done that a few times already. Okay, and so it will have three middleware functions. And the first one is a logger, which is output the URL to the console. We've done that many times. And the second one, do the static file sender. Okay, we'll check if the file exists. And if it is, we'll send file back. If it doesn't, oh, it will to goes to the last one, which will send an error message to say file not found. Okay, and so this will be the sequence. Again, just to, to repeat. And the middleware always run in sequence, which will be become much more obvious next time when we talk about routing, which is uh, not in sequence, but in parallel in a sense. And only one is run. And so you run the logger, you do the static file sender, and finally the last handler, or last, sorry, the middleware only run if the file it does not exist. <clears throat> Okay, and you need to set up the and um, package the JSON. Uh, you can set up some of these information, uh, the names. I mean, this is something you could just manually edit. Okay, and then and this is something new. Let me see if there's something. Okay, and so this sets different script. And so obviously this will be the start script. That means which file or which command line you need to run 
to start your server. You can have different command, for example, for testing or starting up the server with different configurations. You have some parameters afterwards. Okay, so this is the recommended way to do, rather than say, typing in, uh, ah, this is annoying, go away. <clears throat> so this is a better way, and uh, rather than say typing node.js every time, and because if you have multiple JavaScript files, and the user might not know which file to start, and if you need some parameters needs to be added when you're starting the files, the user would not know again in the first time. Whereas if you set this in your package.json, and then the user doesn't have to know this, they just have to run called npm start every time to run the server and it would. Okay. And also this is the convention in the sense most uh, server is set up this way. Okay. And so to do this, what we need to do is in our package.json, we have script. Currently, it only says test, and but currently we don't set anything up, so it's empty. So what we also do, in the comma, and we need to say, okay, this will be the start, and the command that will be node app.js. Okay, so this is exactly the command that we would type in, in the line. Okay, and then you, to run this, you instead you type in npn start. So the start will be the name of the script, which is start here. So you can do similar like npm test. Okay, and which doesn't do anything. It will say error, no test specified, which is what this one does here. Okay. <clears throat> and if you do MPN start, and it will run this command, it actually probably will display here anyway. Yeah, and you'll just say demo, version start and that's the files in the run and now if i do this one here it will can see the responses yeah okay and back into the slides this is the convention yeah allows you to run the more complicated there because you can say add some parameters in there as well and you can define multiple scripts each one have a different name so you can have test and you can have start you can have different script the names you define and you just run the script by npm followed by the script name okay and so and every time you create a new node project, or you want to use one, and you have to install Express if it does not exist um, in that particular project folder already, and you should have to do this again to ensure that exists in your code. And in our case, we already have, so we don't need it. Okay. <clears throat> and in this case, uh, we're gonna use need a folder called static, because that's where we're gonna put in all the static files that the user can request. So we're gonna be looking something like this. You have a static folder, have a text file and a couple of pictures. Let me see if I have the files somewhere on my computer so I don't have to recreate them. Uh, here, go here.
Uh, okay, yeah, I found one. Okay, uh, so I just find some files and I'll show you quickly here. And I just um, copied over something. Now I have a static folder now and it has some files inside a secret.txt and a MATLAB image and another HTML file. And the actual file doesn't really matter. So now you have some files there and you can later start to test. <coughs> Okay, and here comes the, the logging middleware, which just output some information about incoming requests to the console, which we've done many times already. So it's this one is showing the URL and also showing the time of the request. Okay. Uh, okay, ah, and that's the other things, and you can see. And so this certainly is not very interesting. But also the other thing you can see now, when we start in the server, we go just straight app, if you remember, and this is the express itself, and dot listen. Okay, so that means you don't need the HTTP uh, module, you don't see, need to say the create server and then dot listen something, something. You just only say app dot listen, and then the port. Okay, and this one is a function that will you will run uh, when the server is first started. You don't need it. You can just say app dot listen three thousand. It will start. And but sometimes you put functions there. For example, it give you a message knows the server is actually starting. So <clears throat> that further simplifies things. So if I go into change, you can see. And what I need to do now, first, I don't need this HTTP module anymore. I have these ones. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, I don't need this one again. So the equivalent of this, I just need to say app.listen3000. Uh, okay. So it's even simpler. I'm going to stop this and uh, rerun npn start and it will start here and then i refresh and i should get the same response here no so this is a much shorter version compared to, and not much shorter but this is already not very long but this is even shorter okay and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add in a second uh, parameter which itself is a function and just to display some message, so I know, uh, let's say express server started, and then I get a message when the server first started. If, but now if I stop, and then npn start, uh, you can see there's a message now says express server started, and that's because this line of code I added. Okay, and if I keep sending more requests here, and it gets say not authorized, password is fish, and these ones still logging. Yeah, as before. And so most of you would just using app, but listen so it's later on this format to start your server because that's probably the easiest one. These are kind of little convenience and it's built on top of the actually node HTTP module and it just writes slightly less code. And you can see, you don't need to specify the handler function either. And because it would automatically adding all these um, middleware functions or routing functions you said before, because they understand that these are middleware, so you don't need to specify again when you starting the server. <laughs> Uh, okay, and so obviously we didn't have this problem because in this case, and um, it has the next function, but it didn't call as a result. And the, uh, so basically there's no response sent back to the user yet. 
and so it will hang there, similar to the problems we had before. Okay, so you need to send some kind of response back and either use with the RES, which is the shorter for response, and dot end the method or dot send the method. Mostly so far, we'll just use, use dot end. But in, sorry, in this example, we didn't do any of them yet. So there's no response back. And so the client will be waiting forever. I guess similar to the one we tested, uh, where we're creating a node server, we didn't, we have an empty request handler function, essentially, and this, the client side is gonna have these are same effects. And so here we need to have another uh, middleware which actually send back some request. So first, and we're gonna call the next now. So it will run next middleware. Okay. And here you will get a slightly different uh, errors because even you call the next, there's no next and middleware. So, okay, maybe I'll just demonstrate now and which should be quite easy to do. And so all I need to do, I just comment these out. Okay, and you have this logging function, it will call next, but that's not, there isn't such thing of next, another middleware there and the stop. And the restart here, and I refresh. Okay, it so it cannot get this one. So basically, that's an error when you call next, there's nothing. So this slash means the root directory, and that means nothing returned. So that just that's why it says cannot get this. Okay, and so then. Okay, and uh, this is the other thing and will be quite useful to do and um, is currently every time you change your code, you have to stop your server and restart it and can be a, a bit annoying. Okay, and there's a way and uh, which allows you to automatically uh, restart the code if there's any change. Okay, and to do this, and you have to install another package, which is called node mon. And uh, I think MON stands for monitor. So monitoring if there's any change, it will automatically restart the server. And I think there's other options to do that, like a P node or something. So this is one of them, but the way they work is quite similar. Okay, and first, just as any other module, if you need to install, uh, included that you first have to install it's run npm install followed by the module name node mode and this one means you can install this globally because it's a tool it's something you can run on your command line and if you install it globally that means later on other modules they don't have to install it again to use it okay this thing only works the hyphen hyphen global parameter or switch or whatever you call it only works for those things that you can run from the command line like MPN or node mo or something else for a package for example like express and you can't use hyphen hyphen global it doesn't work you still have to install it for every node uh, project that you want to use that particular package you have to install it separately which is a bit annoying. That means if you have 10 projects that they all need to use Express, you need to install 10 copies of the, exactly the same file, which is a little bit of waste. <clears throat> okay, anyway, and so you install and then you can start to use it. And instead of typing node app.js, you type in node mole app.js. So basically you're using node mole instead of node to start your app. Again, you can actually add it to the package.json file to including this. So this is actually another benefit why we're using npn start and it knows which program it should use to start the app. <clears throat> okay, um, so let's do this now. So I'm gonna first 
uh, I'm gonna stop my server. I can npm install, um, which is node mo. As I said, I'm gonna install this globally. So later on, other modules can use the same um, command line tools without having to. So I suspect it might ask you for yeah permission because it's installing globally. So that's the, what the error is for. Yeah, so you can see it's likely, oh, I'm not sure if, and you do not have the permission to access this file. Okay, so what you need to do on the Mac, you have to do sudo, actually, uh, just do the same thing, but with sudo in front. So you install this as a super user, Maybe on the Windows, you don't have to do this. Can remember now? And they'll ask you for a password. And if it's correct, and they will install everything. Okay, and it's done. Okay, and actually, now if you look, it's actually added 117 packages and just for this one node more. So you can see how quickly the NPM module subfolder can grow. Uh, okay, okay, I'm gonna just run this to update to avoid it keep asking me to. No, yeah. Hmm? Ah, it doesn't work. Great. Okay. Anyway, and um, the other things I want to just mention quickly is say the node mode will not be installed in this node underscore module subfolder inside this project. If you look at here, there's nothing called node mode here. And that's because that's because we installed it globally. And so it's as installed as some separate place. Because we insert global is insert some separate place in your system that all different module uh, node project can access. So it's not here. Okay, and once I install this, or oh, should have kept it, and then need to change my package.json file and the install LV node. I'm going to use the node mode to start my server. Okay, and then if I really want to start, I still use the exact same command, um, which is mpn start. And the actual start script changed the command, does not have to change at all. I do mpn start. And you can see now it's actually node mole is doing the watching. Okay, I'm going to do some simple changes. For example, uh, let's say we change incoming from request from. Okay, I can just change the text. Uh, there is a incoming request from some somewhere. Okay, and now I just save file, and you can see here it's actually tried to restart it now. So if I go here and I refresh, I still get this error um, because I don't um, get it. Mm. But you can see now. Uh, the message is now different. It's already updated to the new text I added here. And um, because the server automatically restarted the Node.js server, sorry, Node mode automatically restarted the, uh, the Node.js server or the Express server once there's any changes being saved. Okay, that makes life a little bit easier. <laughs> Okay, and this is the last part which actually talk a little bit more about serving static files. And we will require two new modules. These are all building ones and in Node. So you don't have to install them. One is called the pass. This one is called FS, I think it stands for file system, you need them. And so this is, oh, this is the middleware which actually 
return the file. So it has the request response as the next function. If there's something afterwards, we said we have a dex, which is when file does not exist or send back an error message. You can potentially do that in this middleware as well, but that can potentially make it too big. Okay. And you say file pass equal to pass dot join. So this pass is this module we requested. Join is this, uh, uh, sorry, join is one of the building functions. Okay, this is a system variable. It gives you the current directory where the code is. It will join this one with static because we know the files are in the folder called statics. And finally, the request URL. So the request URL would be including the file name. So it could be slash index.html or slash an icon.jpg, something like that. And then when you join all these three together, what you get uh, is the full file pass to find the file if it's there. Then to actually get to the part, get the file, and then you use the FS module, which is the file system module, and the static files, you say file pass, which is this file pass, and then do a function. If there's error, and then the file information. Okay. And if there's error, it says just run max and the return. Return means finish this up and finish uh, this or stop this uh middleware so it will stop there and if there's no error it will run this if file info dot is file res dot send file file pass okay so it will check so basically file info will get information about that file specified by this pass and is file is true. So because it is a possibility, what you request is a directory, which in case you can't send it back. So if it is file and the response would send a file specified by the file pass. If this is not the case, again, just goes to next. That means the error function. Yeah, hope that makes sense. So because of the time, I'm going to just copy paste this. Uh, we'll go here, type in here. I can't use dot, dot, dot. Okay, you can see my survey is already working. And uh, let's see what files I have here. I have matlab.png. So if I go here, Okay, localhost 3000 and followed by a file name, I say matlab.png. So it actually get me the picture, which is this one here. Okay, I can also say type in uh, slash secret. Again, sorry, text, secret.text. Okay, it shows the message. This is the file with the secret. Or if I type in something else, I do type in demo.png. It tells you cannot get. Okay, so this is a file which they cannot find, which is meant to done in the next middleware. Okay, and we already explained this. For example, the join part, we join the pass, the directory name, the static folder name, and then the actual file into something like this. Okay, we also explained the stat. It takes the file pass and we'll return the error and file info function error, if there's error, to it being there, and file info about particular files, which we just use to test if it's a file. Okay, and this is the last function. 
And so this is very straightforward. All it does, because by then we know that the error, we just say set the status to 404 and send an error message, say file not found. That's all we need. Okay, and so we just go here. We'll set our last function. Okay, and now we come back here. If we still say demo.png uh, and we give you an error message, say file not found, which is what right here. Okay. Yeah, as I said again, the order of the middleware is important. So in our code, we have the log first, and then return the file, and finally the error message. So this will be the orders. If you put this one first, it will always run and just send the error message, which is what we want. Okay, so this is in terms of reading, so it will be the chapter one. There's a section on Express, that's it. and also the chapter three and four in terms of the basic concept of Express and the middleware. Okay, that's it for 